everyone knows the owners and yourself never stand still. And the next is a, off the pitch is a big stadium revamp, expanding the North Stand and an entertainment area. How excited about that? And what can, what can you tell us about what's going to be there? It's very exciting. It's very exciting. We've released and unveiled uh, our plans uh, for the development. Every year there's always something new. Every year, because there's, there's always a need to improve and evolve and grow. We don't stand still. We never stood still. The Etihad, we started somewhere, and every, every couple of years we will do something, uh, whether it's the tunnel club, uh, whether it's the new stands, whether it's the, uh, the seating. Uh, and now we're going to have uh, a wonderful, wonderful development around it that's going to just enhance the whole area, uh, is going to be great for the fans, and it's going to bring, I think, positive revenue for the club. We're always in growth mode. We're never in contentment and, and pause and let's just you know, milk the asset. Because this is about building value and growing value. And it's about reinvesting cons consistently uh, into this club. It's about redeveloping the Etihad. It's about building the CFA. It's about building a stadium in, in New York. Uh, it's about building an academy in Girona. Uh, it's about building an academy in Palermo. It's about investing in a club in, in Brazil, in Bahia, and, and, and taking it to win, hopefully, uh, and, and compete at the highest level in, in South America. It's always about growth, and it's always about what's the next best thing, and it's always about creating and building true value for this, uh, for this great, great group. Um, first full summer tour mm. for a while, with mm. COVID and major championships. How important, career in Japan or on the itinerary, how important is it that you know, the club goes to these places and, and spreads the word, not just for Manchester City, I guess, but for you know, the Premier League, UEFA, every, everyone, all the trophies will be, will be there. Of course. It's, it's great for the club and, and it's, it's great for the brand of this club and our fan base that is now global. We are Mancunian at heart, but now we are global also. And if you look at the club when we did our tour last, last summer and we were in the United States, and I remember I think we were playing a game in, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and if you look at the number of fans, the Manchester City fans, in that stadium, uh, I think it was 80,000, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, it just showed, showed us where Manchester City is today in the world of sports, not just the world of football, in the world of sports. And this summer, we're going to go to Japan. We're going to go to Korea. I incredible markets, but more importantly, incredible fans that love football, that love this club, and, and, and are helping growing our fan base to hopefully becoming one of the largest fan bases in the world. And you talk about legacy and club history, and I know it's very important to you. Um, and we're set to unveil another statue, I understand, with uh, Colin Bell, Francis Lee, and, and Mike Summerby. What, what are you, have you seen it? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, how important is it to remember those guys? You know, you said the journey started, yeah. you know, with David Silver and Aguero, and then, but the journey before that, these guys were at the centre of that. I've seen the statue. And uh, obviously, I've been very involved in this because it's, um, it's something that is very personal for me. Um, you have to recognize greatness and you have to, you know, recognize incredible people that have contributed to what we have today. We have a responsibility, and I think as caretakers of this great club. And while obviously the statues that have been built so far has been, have recognized the modern day heroes of Manchester City. What this new statue is going to give is, is, is something that I think every City fan, uh, I think, truly appreciates, which is the great history of this club. And it's represented with, uh, with Francis, Colin and, and Mike. And, and having them together uh, in a, uh, hopefully, a, a magnificent piece of art, uh, I think is, is the least we can do for what they've done and, and, and really leaving that everlasting legacy always there to remember what, what was, that this club has, has an incredible history. And of course, Mike got his OBE from mm. Prince William this summer. And he was instrumental in calming people down last night, I understand. Mm. You know, he was, uh, you know, calm down, we're doing okay. I mean, he is a special sort of human being, isn't he? He is such an important part of, of, of this club uh, in every possible way. I, am, um, I have deep gratitude for, for Mike, and, and his role um, and his friendship. And uh, I, I know this year has been you know, so special for him in every possible way. To have him 
you know, be with me yesterday uh, at the end of that game, um, I think was very, very special. And that's the beauty of City, isn't it? And for people who don't understand the way the club works, everyone who's played a part in their history is always welcome back. Gail Clichy was there last yeah. night. Like I say, Fernandinho was, was there last night. Carlos Tevez, Sergio Aguero were there last night. They don't lose that connection, do they? And it's the same for people who are not superstars. Absolutely. I mean, yesterday we had all these great players that have, that have um, contributed so much to this club. They, they have a sense of ownership themselves and, and they have a sense of pride themselves. They were winning yesterday. Uh, but it's not just them, by, by the way. It's also, I can tell you, there were so many executives, people that worked for us and have left, that have come again yesterday. Uh, people that have worked for us 15 years ago, 10 years ago. People that have just left us maybe a year ago. Everybody is, you know, I think we have this in this club, a sense that you're always going to be part of this. And uh, you're, you're, you could be still here or you could move on to another uh, challenge, but we will never forget and we will always appreciate. And, um, and it was great seeing so many people from the past yesterday. And if we could just move to the academy and the emergence of Rico Lewis, who was as happy as anyone last night, how impressed with his seamless arrival on, onto the big stage? And, you know, I mean, no one dreamt he would have probably played as many times as he did. I think he played 14 times this season. Mm. Well, you know, you said it. We have, a, we have a small group in terms of the squad, but also we have shown in our academy uh, how we have produced the best team in England uh, or the best teams in England over the last five, six years consistently. So we are, the talent is there. We have great players, great coaching staff, and, and that's producing players like Rico Lewis, like Cole Palmer, and many others. Uh, and, and we have a, a first team coach in, uh, in Pep uh, Guardiola that gives young talent a chance, that is, that has the courage and the open-mindedness to bring them in, give them the opportunity, and, uh, and you have then great examples like Rico Lewis at 18, uh, he's given the opportunity and he grasps it. And, uh, and I'm very happy for him, I'm, but I'm, you know, I'm delighted for Rico, but I'm even more delighted for the academy because it's showing us consistently that we are producing that sort of talent and then we have a pathway for them. The ones that have uh, and that we see have a pathway towards the first team. They get, the, they get the chance, they get the opportunities. I mean, how many players? I mean, look at Phil. Look at Phil Foden coming out from the academy. He's the most decorated player today, probably, in, in English football at his age. At his age. Look at the minutes he's played and look at the, the evolution. You know, from 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We've been very careful in, in supporting Phil to get him to where he is today. And we'll do the same with Rico, or we'll do the same with Cole, and we'll do the same with all, with all, the, all the others. And um, we're surrounded with their trophies too. We've got the yeah. Premier League too and the under 18s trophies here, that, and they, they keep winning them year after year, just, just like. It's the winning mentality, yeah. and it's that winning mentality that spreads across every team involved in this group. But also, it's, it's surely good for English football. Or, or World football. Of course. I mean, we had players in the Burnley, a player in the Burnley team that came up, two players in the Sheffield United team that have come up. So it's not just Manchester City and the individuals that benefit, but the game benefits from the professionalism and the skill of Manchester City's coaches and, and scheme. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that professionalism, that level of, uh, of development, um, and then the carefulness. I mean, we're very careful in how we developed these young players. Uh, and that's respected by the entire industry, uh, which is why they're being targeted. You know, today, why, why is everybody scouting city players? Uh, well, they're good, of course, but it's not just because they're good. It's because they know we have a philosophy, uh, we have a system, uh, we have a track record uh, of producing incredible talented players, champions, and, uh, and that, you know, some, some players end up obviously with us in the, in the first team, others end up going and, and having great careers. So when we talk about trebles, there's not more than one treble in the club this season. So the club has now won PL titles at first team level, EDS and under 18 level. have won the top trophies in those three competitions for three years running each. 
three triples. So think of that for, for a moment. A triple treble across all levels uh, or most levels of, uh, of, uh, of a professional football uh, within a club. It's, uh, I mean, this says the story. This says it all. It says it all about what we've been saying, which is about how our academy continues to produce and to match what we're doing at the first team level. And here, you know, the triple treble shows you this is across the board. And uh, I think is, is a testament to uh, everyone in this academy we have. Uh, we have an incredible academy. Uh, we are producing the best football in England. We're producing the best talent in England. And we're doing it consistently. And we're doing it hand in hand with the first team, which is kind of the, I would say the essence of day one when we, when we, when we built CFA was how to keep the academy and the first team all in the same place and create that continuity and that togetherness. And if we talk about consistency and apply that to the women's game, no silverware for them this year, but you know, a long unbeaten run in the season, fourth place, uh, development of some young talent. Where, where do you see the, the women's team at the moment and the, and the game's progress as a whole on the women's side of things? Well, the women's game is, is, has certainly evolved in a way I didn't expect in, in this speed. Uh, it's really evolved very fast. And um, it is certainly something that we're very focused on. Um, my, my daughter, Lulu, uh, reminds me every day uh, that this, the women's team has to be a focus. She's here with you? Oh, she team? watches every game. She, yeah. she doesn't miss a game. And, uh, and that tells me, I think it's a, it's a great reminder for me uh, and for all of us that the game is, is, is arrived. The women's game has arrived. It's real. Its fan base is growing. Uh, you're seeing it in, in every game. You're seeing it uh, in the stands. You're seeing it with the, with the quality of the football. Uh, our, our women's team has, has always been, again, very consistent, always there, always competitive. I think we will look at this season as a, as a positive season uh, in the sense that we were very competitive all the way till the end. We're going to come back. We're going to come back. We're going to support this team. Uh, we have a great manager. We have a great core uh, group of players. Uh, and we have a commitment from the organization uh, to help this group uh, continue to grow, continue to improve and, and, and compete and win. Uh, as was with every single uh, team within, within, the, within the group. And it's not really fair to pick one player out, but I'm going to because the women's equivalent of Erling Haaland would be Bunny Shaw, yeah. who's uh, had a remarkable season, breaking oh, records of her own. How impressed are you when you... Very impressed, very impressed. She's an, an incredible striker, uh, again, incredible leader within the group um, and, and has played an amazing part of this journey uh, of, this, of this season. Uh, but but uh, as you said, it's it's also not just her; it's it's the group as a whole. Uh, we have a very very talented group to to build on. Let's talk about the wider family now. Finally, for the final bit of the the the, the chat, it's the CF, CFG. You, you spoke quite a lot about it in during the previous bits of the interview. But can we start in in the USA? Mm -hmm. New York City sort of came of age, Champions 2021, Eastern Conference. Final 2022, and now the stadium projections have been produced, printed, delivered, yeah. shown to people. I mean, that's a momentous moment, isn't it? Finally, I can say here in this in this case, finally, this has been a very long and agonizing process. Uh, not easy to build a stadium stadium in, in New York City. Very, very hard. It's very important to have your stadium. You know that in, in any any team. We've built, I think, a great organization, a great club, a great fan base in New York, and now we're going to give uh, this team a wonderful stadium. How, how will it impact on the community, the fans? You, you've mentioned them, but just the impact of having that stadium, that centre for them. Oh, I mean, it's critical. It's crucial. I mean, today we're playing effectively in, in, in an, you know, another team's stadium. And by the way, another team that doesn't play football. <laughs> we're playing in a baseball stadium. So, of course, uh, I think uh, you know, what we've done, given the constraints, has been, has been incredible. But this team needs its, its stadium, and that will, will add tremendous value to, to the community. Uh, it'll create jobs. Uh, it will create, I think, a home to this, uh, to this great club, and, and that's critical.
and magic happened in Melbourne again this season. Mm -hmm. Premiers for the, I think, was it the third straight A League? Third straight, again. You know, uh, uh, you look at it uh, in, in, a, in a wage controlled uh, environment, uh, our ability to show consistent success. Uh, just again, is a testament to the, to the management and the philosophy we have as a group. Uh, you know, great team. You know, you know that in any competition, to to win three in a row, and to be there three in a row. Uh, of course, we we weren't uh, successful in the grand final uh, last week, but you know that's that's football. Um, you, you know, in the finals, finals are you know ninety minutes, and uh, it's different than when you're playing a league. In, in a league, inevitably the best team wins over 38 games, 24 games, whatever the number of games, uh, most of the time, the best team wins. In a final, it's 90 minutes. <laughs> sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, it's great. Uh, and when it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, Melbourne, unfortunately, over the season, were the most consistent team. But in the grand final, they weren't successful. We've talked about the success in the group in Melbourne and, and New York City and the excitement there, but it's not always a bed of roses, is it? Owning 12 or 13 football clubs, there's going to be some disappointments along the way. How do you characterise some of the disappointments this, this campaign? Of course. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of football. Uh, football is about winning and it's also about losing. Uh, and, and in both cases, uh, it's how you behave after you win and how you behave after you lose. And when you have 13 clubs and when you're operating all over the world, you're going to have, in many instances, challenges. I mean, it's, you know, listen, we're always dealing with a challenge here or there. Uh, look at Girona as an example. We invested in Girona. We, 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 we took the, cl the club from the, you know, from the second division, uh, La Liga, to, to La Liga. And then we got uh, relegated. Um, that was a big challenge for us. But guess what? We, we, we dissected the issue. We analyzed it. We did what we needed to do to fix the challenges. And then, you know, Girona went back to the first division uh, through hard work and, and a well-planned and thoughtful approach. And now they're a solid team in La Liga. So there's going to be ups and downs. Uh, Trois, uh, we invested in Trois. We took it to uh, the first division. And now they, 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 this season they've had a, you know, very disappointing season and they've got relegated. It is what it is. It's a challenge. We'll deal with it. We'll figure out what went wrong over there. We'll put a plan and we'll get the, we'll the, cl we'll get the club back up and running. It's, it's part of the game. And, uh, and you know, whenever there's a step back, uh, it happens. Uh, but then you look at the next step forward and the two steps after that. Mumbai has been a great story. We win, we won the league, then we were, then we didn't. Yokohama, uh, Melbourne, uh, you know, wherever we are in the world. Montevideo has been, a, has been challenged also. So you deal with that. Uh, and it's part of the business, and it's part of the football. I don't think it's a major surprise that other group, there are other groups trying to do what we do and have done so successfully. Can you just run us through the rest of the acquisition in Brazil you mentioned uh, briefly and, and, pl and plans for CFG? So we continue to grow. We continue to grow in a very thoughtful manner. Uh, last summer, uh, Palermo joined uh, the group, Palermo again, great history, uh, great legacy, great region, great club, difficult few years. And, and, and we came in um, and now, you know, pa pa Palermo has gone from Serie C, Serie C, the third division, to Serie B. And uh, again, you, and always, I think we have a blueprint of what we do. Uh, we support the club, we put the management, we get the, uh, the academy in place, we put the infrastructure in place, and then the team grows. And, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't expect Palermo very soon, uh, hopefully in Syria. Uh, so, and Palermo, again, is a big team. It's a big club. Uh, a lot of aspirations we have for, for Palermo. Uh, latest acquisition is, uh, is in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is obviously where all the talent, the best talent in the world is coming out of, uh, of, of Brazil. And to have now ownership in, in a great club in Bahia, again, similar to the Palermo story, in the sense that great history, but modern in the last couple of years, a challenged uh, history. We've come in and now we're going to support the team uh, as it goes up uh, the ladder and goes back to uh, the great position uh, as a, one of the best teams in Brazil. It fits perfectly within our group and of course in one of the most uh, important uh, countries in the world, uh, in Brazil. So this is going to be uh, another very big club within the group uh, and a club we're going to be spending a lot of time and focus 
uh, in developing. And, and you'll do something in the park, right? It's always about growth. And it's about you grow, you pause, you get things in order, and then you start the next step. And it's one step at a time, one step. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep going, and we're going to keep in, uh, investing, and we're going to keep growing value, and, and we're going to keep bringing uh, happiness to every community and every club we have in the world, and hopefully we'll keep bringing success in every, uh, in every club and team we have around the world. It's been a, it's been a great journey over the last 15 years, uh, but I'm excited about the future, uh, and it's about now the next 10, 15 years too.